Welcome to CSS Hero and in this video I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough on how the plugin works and also highlight some new features we've added to version 5. Now over here I do have my demo website themoviecharacters.com. I have already activated the plugin and when you do the same you will see up here in your admin panel you will see CSS Hero. Just click on the link to launch the plugin. And right now you can see we have the user interface for CSS Hero. Now the way the plugin works is that you basically just choose an element that you want to design and then you make those design changes. Now if you begin to move your mouse over your web page, you would notice several content being highlighted. As an example, if I move my mouse over here to my logo, you can see right now that my logo is being highlighted. If I wanted to make a change, all I would need to do is to now click on my logo and then over here to the left, now you see these are where we have all the available properties. Let's make a very, very quick change. Let's say I wanted to change the font size for Titanfall review. I want to make it bigger. I'm going to click on the link right here and then right here I'm going to go to typography, click inside. And then right here, I can change the font size from 40 pixels. I can take it all the way to, let's say 50 pixels, all right? You can see right now, it's much bigger. And I could also change the color as well. Up here, I will simply click on the box right there, and then I can change the color to anything that I want. I can go ahead now, save my change, and that's basically how CSS Hero works. Just basically, you click on an element, make your change, save, and you're good to go. There are other things we can do as well. So say for example, right here on the right, you will notice we have our sidebar with the recent posts. Notice though that the titles of our posts are pretty much designed the exact same way. The font size is, is the same, the color is the same. That's because they belong to the same class. Now, if I was to click on, let's say Bruce Willis, words for the ninth time, if I clicked in there, and I made a change to the font size, you would notice that the other titles are also changing in size as well. That is because all of them belong to the same class. You make one design change to any one of them, and that same change will be reflected across all the other titles. So what if I just wanted to make the change only to the very first title in here, all I need to do is just to right click and then say only this. Now I can click in there and now let's change the color instead. I'm going to go over to my box in here and now let's go with something greenish. And there it is. And now you can see that it's only the first title in here that has changed the color. And that's exactly how you can make uh, specific changes to specific elements. Right here where you have your selection mode, you would notice the default is normal, typically meaning that when you choose an element and you make a change to that element, if there are other elements belonging to the same class, the changes will be reflected across all of them. But you could switch this now to only this, and it pretty much works the exact same way with you, uh, right clicking and then choosing only this for that particular element. Now over here, where you have your inspector, if you click in there, you will have access to basically all the changes that you've made so far. Remember that the first thing we did was to change the font size for our Titanfall review. And right here you can see the size, we changed it to 50 pixels. We also changed the color as well. You can see that's the value right there. And then remember that over here on our sidebar, we first of all changed the, the size of the titles to 17 pixels. And then we made a change to the very first title in here for the color. And that's the value of the color right there. That's basically how the inspector tab works. Let's go back to our CSS hero. And then down here, you'll also have access to the code editor where you will, can see the CSS code. You click on any element, say for example, the read more link right here. Down here, you will see the actual class, the element highlighted. And then right here, if you prefer, you can simply come in here right now and add your own code. So I can say font size 34 pixels and there it is. Now you can see my read more link is now 34 pixels in size. But this of course is specific to users who know how to work with CSS code. 
Up in here, we can change the screen size for the website. So we can take a look at how it would look like on a different screen size. And by default, we do have five of them. You have your traditional desktop, you will have tablet landscape, you will have tablet portrait, and then finally mobile landscape as well as mobile portrait. Now, this is of course very, very important because you not only want to design your website for desktops, but you want to make sure that your website looks good across all different kinds of screen sizes. Now, what if you wanted to create your own custom screen size? Well, you could do that right here where you have project. You will see the media query settings. You click in there and now from here, you can add your own custom query. I can click inside. I can add my minimum width. Let's say, for example, uh, 900 will be the minimum width and then maximum width of 1240. Just as an example, I'm going to click on submit. And now if I was to go back right here, you will see we now have access to the custom media screen size that I just created. I can switch to desktop again and then switch back to my custom media query. And right now you can see how my website would look like on a screen that has a minimum width of 900 pixels and a maximum width of 1,240 pixels. And of course I can go back to my media query and then from here, either edit my custom query or just simply go ahead and delete the query. And that's how you can manage your screen sizes. Now, what if you actually wanted to click on a link on your page? So say for example, I wanted to go to the Titanfall review page. The thing is by default, if I clicked on the link right here, CSS Hero thinks that, oh, I want to design the title. So in order to tell CSS Hero that, hey, I don't want to design, I want to go to the actual page right here. You can switch from the edit mode to the navigate mode. And now if I clicked on the link, it will now take me to the actual page for Titanfall review. And of course I can go back, click on edit to go back to the edit mode and begin to make my design changes. Now, speaking of design changes, we do have the undo buttons right here. So we have undo, you have redo, and of course you have the history button as well. Undo and redo are pretty straightforward. You click on the history button right here and you will have access to all the major changes that you've made in a certain period of time. You click in there and you'll have all the design changes uh, been reapplied. Now, going back to projects, we have access to so many other features including variables. Now, what exactly are these and how do they work? Now, in order to explain this, I'm going to go ahead now and navigate back to the home page. And remember earlier when I changed the color of Titanfall review from black to red, what if we wanted to apply the exact same color here to the background of my header? Now I'm going to go over to edit, click on Titanfall review. Now if I go over to typography, Right here, you can see this is the actual value, the hexadecimal value for this shade of red. It's CE4141. Now, I'm a human being, you're a human being. It's going to be very hard for us to remember values like this. But what if instead of remembering the actual value, what if we could save the value as a name that we can easily remember and then simply use that name whenever we want to apply those values. What I'm trying to say here is right here, this is the current value, right? CE4141. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the symbol right here. And now right here, we can create a variable name specifically for this value. I'm going to call this one red, red dash color. Okay. Now I'm going to set red dash color as the name of my variable, which has the value of the CE4141. Now to apply the variable very, very easily, I'm going to click on my header right here, go to background. And now right here, I'm going to click on the symbol again. And now right here, instead of set, I'm going to click on get right here because we've already created a variable. Now I'm going to get the variable. I'm going to click on get. And now you can see we have the name red underscore color. And that is the value right there. I'm going to click in there. And now you can see I have easily applied the value right there. Pretty cool, right? That's the whole point of variables. They allow you to store certain kinds of values with a name you can easily remember. And then whenever you need to apply those values, all you need to do is to remember the name 
and you're good to go. I could do the same thing right here as well. Let me just scroll down to, let's say, uh, Legion makes 900 million. I can click in here as well. Again, go to typography right now, and now go over here to color, go to get, and now once again, the value is right there. I can easily apply the color, and that is exactly how variables work. And if you go up here to project variables, if you click in right here, now you will have access to all the variables that you've created thus far. You also have access to the edit browser tool. And what this does is that when you click on it, it'll basically show you all the design changes that you've saved so far. Now you also have access to checkpoints and what exactly is this feature and how can you make use of them? Well, let's say you were designing a website for a client of yours and you have two different kinds of styles, right? Let's say one style has a particular uh, text color, it has a particular text size, and you're using a different font family. You can apply those changes, right? Save that as checkpoint one, and then apply new changes, change the font color, change the font size, do all that good stuff, save that as checkpoint number two, and then you can simply load checkpoint one, show your client that, hey, okay, here over here for version one, we have this color, we have this font size, they look at it, they say, okay, well, what about version two? And then you can simply load version two, which would be checkpoint two, and then show them the different style. You also have access to the custom fonts feature where you can add your own custom fonts if you'd like to use them. And finally, on the project, you can choose to reset all the edits that you've made so far in your project. Moving on to the tools section, you can choose to style the login page. And we all know fully well that the login page for WordPress by default doesn't look that great. So using this feature, you can actually customize how your login page would look like. But we're not going to do that. Let me just simply go back to my home page. Going back to tools, now you could also choose to view your page as a logged out user. Now this is particularly useful if you have certain kinds of elements or content that only appear when you're logged out. You can use this tool to actually see them while you're logged in using CSS Hero and then make whatever design changes that you want to make to them. The show hovers tool will simply highlight elements that have a hover state applied to them. So if I click in there, for example, right now you can see that my menu items, which do in fact have a hover design attached to them, are now highlighted in blue, as you can see. Now, if I go back and uncheck that, now you can see the text has gone back to black. So basically the point of this tool is just to highlight any elements that have a hover state applied to them. And of course you have access to the documentation. Down here we have access to even more functionalities and tools provided by CSS Hero version 5. The first one here being the JavaScript editor. That's right, you can also run your own custom JavaScript code using CSS Hero. You simply come in here, add your code, and then run it. We can also add backgrounds as well, video backgrounds. You click in there, and you have access to a very wide variety of videos provided by Cover. So let's say, for example, I wanted to add a background video to my page right here. I can click on the page, first of all, and then right here, let us search for a video related to code. So I'm gonna type in code right there, and let's just choose the very first one in here. I'm gonna go ahead now, choose the video, click on apply, and there you go. I know this is not the best example, but at least you can see the video playing in the background, really powerful stuff. I'm gonna go ahead to remove the video, and then right here, you also have, have access to the page inspector. This works very, very similar to the inspect tool on your browser. You simply click on any element, and if you use the inspect tool right here, you will see on the left, you will have access to the HTML code. And then on the right, you will have access to all the CSS code. Let me close that. Now, alternatively, I could also simply right click on any element whose code I want to inspect. So right here, for example, on Titan 4 Review, I can right click and then simply click on inspect HTML. And there you go. From here right now, I could simply change the font size to let's say 25 pixels and maybe even change the color from the variable to blue, save my changes, and there you go. That's another way how you can gain access to the Inspect HTML tool. Right here on the right, you have a very, very cool feature where you can actually get a real mobile preview 
all you need to do is just to scan the QR code with your mobile device and you will see a live preview on your device. It's really a powerful new feature added by CSS Hero version 5. Be sure to check it out. And of course, we also have the site-wide preview, the site browser. Now, when you click in here, what this does is that basically you will get at a glance the design changes you've made across your website. Now, I recently changed the background color of my header and now you can see how it looks like on the home page, on a regular post, on the page, and then depending if you have additional plugins like Elementor, in my case as an example, you can see I have access to how the design would look like in different parts of my website. You can see it on my contact page, my post about the kangaroo boxer, you can see how it looks like, and so on. I could even go ahead now and load that specific page, and then if I wanted to make the change in here, I can go ahead to do so. Really powerful stuff. And of course, you have access to your preferences in here. For example, you could change the editor theme from dark to, let's say, light as an example. Personally, I do like the DAC color, so I'll go with that one. You can, of course, also change the font size of your code. So, for example, right here, let's just choose this. Let me just make a quick change to, all right, to 44 pixels. So, right here, this is the code. I can go ahead right now and increase the size of the code so it's much bigger. As an example, I can change the line height, I can enable my hints or disable them, and so on. And finally, you have access to the export function. So if you've made lots of changes and you'd like to apply those changes to another website, just click on the export button. And now from here, you can copy the code either as minified version or just regular CSS code. Or even if you've made changes to your JavaScript, you can copy all the JavaScript code and then simply paste it to your other website. That's basically how that function works. And of course, if you want to exit CSS Hero, you do have the button right there to turn it off. So that's it for an introduction to CSS Hero version 5. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out all the videos in our library that will explore the features of CSS Hero version 5 in more detail.